chapter 4. Man, 
which told me all things that ever I did. Is this is not this the Christ? Verse 30. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. Verse 32. For he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Hallelujah. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? 34. And the last verse I'll be reading. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Hallelujah. May the Lord give us understanding this morning. Glory be to God. Now, I took time to read this so you will understand all of what I will be saying from here. The woman of Samaria came to the water, to the well, to fetch water. That was her purpose. That was her, way, her plan for coming to the well. Coming to the well, she encountered Jesus. Hearing some divine well, hearing the secret of her life that she has not told anyone be revealed, the Bible said the woman abandoned the water pump and went to the city and began to tell others who he has, she has encountered and called them to come join. Now, when you become a Christian, if you cannot abandon your water pump like that woman, which was her urgent need, which was what she felt she needed, and surrendered totally to Christ, dependent on him, child of God, you cannot please God nor serve God well. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, a lot of persons has exchanged what God gave them to live with for what they are living for. Who do you live every day to please? Who do you live every day to worship? Who do you believe you are alive for? I've heard people say, the reason why I'm uh, working is for my children. Oh, which means that's the purpose for them, working, trying to gain the means of living to cater for their family. Praise Master Jesus. But what are you living for? Each time I ask that question, the answer don't come as fast as what as when I ask the question, what do you do for a living? When I ask what do you do for a living, the answer is almost instantaneous. They tell me I'm a carpenter. I do carpentry job for a living. I'm a businessman for a living. I'm a tailor for a living. I'm a doctor for a living. I'm, are you with me? So now, you do all of that for a living, right? Now, having gained that living, what do you now live for? Are you understanding something now? Praise God. It, don't know, it should dawn on you that these things were given to you to live, to be able to live comfortably. But that is not what you are living for. A lot of people wake up money every day to leave some for their marriages, some for their businesses. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what am I saying to us this morning via God's word is what do you meditate more on during your day-to-day -day life or lifestyle? Praise God. You are in church right now. What is your mind on? Some persons are already watching the clock to run by to the time of closing so they can quickly go back to business. Hallelujah. Amen. The record books where you write those that are owing you, those things you want to buy, is a proof of what you are living for. When it becomes what you meditate upon, as a matter of fact, it's appalling to know today that a lot of Christians have this mindset of using God to accomplish a means. Are you with me now? I have a goal I want to achieve. Let me use God to achieve it. By me going to church, praying, and seeing the business come through, seeing the visa come through, seeing the marriage happen, seeing my children grow. You know, I've I, I, I been protected from the powers of darkness. Now, all of
of that should not be the total sum of why you are living. Who are you being protected for? When you are protected from the witches or wizards, for example, what are you protected for? Do you, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Now, when you go to work, when you save money for the year, there is a plan for the money that was being saved. Is it not? When you are working, there is a plan, for, there is a hope for the salary that is to be paid. Now, when the salary is being paid, the question is, what are you going to use the salary for? Marriage is a good thing. Children are blessings. Jobs are necessities. But child of God, those are not what we live for. I was telling with, sharing with us, I think the week of our Thanksgiving, about two weeks ago now, of a, I think one of our members here told me, a very rich man. He said, I was into this on electrical path. A close friend of mine that he slept and did not wake. Praise God. Millions. Properties worth multi million. But it's gone. It's a reminder to us that that is not what we should live for. Are you with me now? Now he has stood before the throne of God to give account for how he used the lights. Obviously, you can't stand before God. There's no car for evidence. Are you with me now? No, there's no car for evidence. That certificate. That you pursued for eight years. There's no, it can't be, it will not be there with you to at least show for evidence that this is what I took time to achieve, sir. No. They are earthly. Earthly things don't cross into the realms of the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. So if it is because of marriage that you are alive, you are living every day to, for you to have, get married or to secure the marriage, at the end, what will it be your gain? He says we are the light of the world, is it not? Which means the world ought to see us and desire that brightness. But today, it's so painful to say that the world is now the light. So to say, negative light, but it's amazing how the church is copying that light. I was in a wedding yesterday. You know, a Christian was married. I saw her. All the things she wear, from the head, head to the toe, was worldly property. Hallelujah. Because of wedding, her eyelash was not good enough anymore. He has to borrow from the world to be okay. Because of wedding, her nails was no longer good. The nails that the husband saw that, that said, I want to marry you, that nails was not good enough. She has to go worldly. Do you, I don't know if you understand this. At every opportunity where we ought to showcase our life that we are Christians today, we show to God that all along we've not really been with Him. All along we've been using Him to gain protection. All along we've been using Him to gain supply. But inside of us, sir, we'd rather be like those people out there. Touch my heart. My heart. Hallelujah. Which means down inside all the while there was this light inside that they was using the Christian garment to cover. Praise God. And I told a pastor friend that was close by. I said, when the church comes to know that there is matrimony and there is holy matrimony, the mindset will change. I don't know if you understand. Praise God. So who are you living for? Are you living for God? How much of God do you think a day? How much of his word do you meditate upon a day? When you see people die, you know, something tells you you are a champion. Something tells you it can't happen to you. So was those people. They also say I reject it. They said it many times. Some people prayed at death. Dying bed. It did not change anything, they still die. Many we have prayed for in the name of Christ. It did not change anything, they still died. Why? The time has come. I will read some scriptures to you this morning that will make you understand this. Hallelujah. The endurance you see on the altar, the patience you see on the altar, is because of what we know. Pastors can go leave the altar, still go and rent a shop and do that same business other people are doing, and
keeping everybody, keeping the ministers at the altar, is that they understand that except the Lord build the city, the builders build in vain. Hallelujah. After all those years of my friend living in air conditioned house to air conditioned car, if you enter his shop, it's all fully sealed up. Air condition is everywhere. Where he is now, if he has not been buried, there's no air condition there. You will see here. Amen. Some persons which he might not even allow to sit with him, they might be neighbors to the mortuary now. So if that is wealth, for showing that wealth, wanting to acquire that wealth, wanting to make millions, wanting to make billions, is what he lived for. Like many youth today, the churches are getting empty, being robbed of youth today. All of them wants to hammer. All of them wants to hit money at all costs. They want to drive you fairly used. My pain is this. After all the stealing, it's still a used car that they go to buy. I don't know if you understand. I was telling one, if you must sell your soul, you did not even want a new thing. A car that somebody has used and parked is what your soul still wants. Brother, you, that person is poor. Hallelujah. Why? They forgot this is not what you should live for. The one you bought 2021, the Mercedes is already advertising 2022 model. So those that killed their father to make wealth, who are they going to kill in 2022 now? Because next year, their own will be old model. It is the satanic strategy to engage. Are you with me? Now listen, everybody wrong they are destiny differently. Your life is different from my life. Do you understand? Are you with me? How many of if you have ever gone through school, didn't you meet your younger sister's mates there? Were they not your classmates? Come on, where are the students? Huh? Did you quit school? Did you quit school that you met somebody you senior 10 years in the same class? You went through the school. But why is it now that you are not having mates you are for showing in business? You are not counting days. This boy opened yesterday, and that's what you are living for now. Every day, everything about you is how to make money. It's how to make money. It's how to make money. God will fold his hands and see how you will make it. Go and read Malachi. Read Malachi chapter 1 down and see what God said. He said, when you are going to bring, he said, I will let you bring it. When you are succeeding in gathering it, I, the Lord, will blow air on it. He said, a rich man, one day said, my heart relaxes. I have enough money, enough goods that will serve us lifetime. Take life easy. Don't fear, don't regard anybody, just be, you are okay. The Bible said, that night, God said to that foolish man, give me your soul that I gave you. And let me see whose property, who it will belong to. And God collected his soul. What happened to the man? All those words became his. Who are you living for? Who are you living for? Who are you living for? Your prayers. Listen to your own prayers today. Are you still? When was the last time you have 30 minutes intercession for people? That word, lost soul, does it still mean anything to you? Lost soul. Lost soul. Does it still mean anything to you? That there is somebody close to you that don't know Christ, does it mean to you at all? Is there any space at all in your heart to reason that word anymore? Or is it just you, 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 you now? Who are you living for? Go around churches today. Sunday service, cars are everywhere. Come during the midweek, especially evangelism. Evangelism day shows you the Christians. Evangelism day shows you who is living for God. Who is living for Christ. Hallelujah. Business. Home. For showing of money. For showing of money. Every meeting, listen, every service you don't attend. Christ writes him down. And the purpose why you didn't attend is recorded. Amen. So 
each time you stay where you stay and service is going on, just try around. There's a man that is recording the event. It's called your shadow. He's there with you. He's recording where you were when service was going on. Praise God. That now, money has been so big that it's now bigger than God. That you cannot even let 10,000 go for one hour, for two hours to glorify this God. Hallelujah. Do you know that this period that a lot of people call season? Huh? Season. That some people are closing their shop and they are in their camp talking to God. Do you know that this period where all others are saying we are going to hit it big, people are closing their shop, they are in their camp praying, talking to God. Look at their life. Are they still not prospering? They are prospering. They are prospering. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know why it's easy for them? Because they don't have greed. I've studied the season, the so-called December season for businessmen. is their season of wickedness. Their season of gross wickedness. Where, because 200 naira is added to a carton of goods, they will add the 200 naira to every item in the carton. Are you with me? That is what they are waiting for. Some have stocked their warehouse since October, just waiting for December. To increase it to any amount they want to put in. But you know the foolishness in it. They forgot that the one that sells biscuit only sells biscuit. That is not the tailor. He doesn't sell tomatoes. He's not a carpenter. He does not sell fuel. So he increases his biscuit money times 10. And the tailor increases her own money to sew the cloth times 10. So the woman selling tomatoes. At the ending of the day, he makes the hundred thousand, he is still poor. I don't know if you understand. Because the tomato woman will not keep her own down for him to enjoy his own. So everybody takes it up and everybody remains poor. And the devilish thing about the season is that nothing goes up, it comes down. Hallelujah. So if to make unnecessary gain is not your motive, easy for you to close the shop. Who are you living for, child of God? Who are you living for? You see this death we are talking about? We keep finding death. Yes, it is the death that is not of God that your prayer can stop. When God calls you, even while you are praying the prayer, God, will, you will fall down. You will just go. So know this at the back of your mind. Are you with me? Those of you that are closing your eyes, I hope it's not don't meditate now. Listen. Hallelujah. Who are you living for? Who are you living for? You know, for those of you that are finding challenges again and again, listen, Satan has discovered that you don't know who you are. For the fact that you are concerned about the troubles the enemy brings around you, it's a sign to the devil you don't know who you are. He will so engage you, eh? He will so engage you because he knows if you are a truly a Christian and you know the sacrifice Christ has placed on you, we know he is the fighter of the battle and not you. I don't know if you understand. You don't pay a lawyer and you begin to read law book at home to see how you will win the case. Do you? No. It's the duty of the lawyer to be studying. Is it not? Your own is to make sure you have the money to pay the bills. But when you begin to take the work from God, you are the one that thinking, ah, Hassle the enemy, hassle the enemy. Ah, they know you don't. That's why the demon has those sons of Stephan. He said, Peter, I know John. But who are you? Who are you? Who are you living for? The scripture said to us in Luke 6 38, down, he said, He said to us, He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. He said, And his righteousness. And how many things? Every other thing shall be added. Every other thing shall be added. But what are we seeking today? Those things, you will see Christians reject job because their job will not accommodate their time for service. 
But today, it is the salary that many Christians want to hear. Why are you? The job. My new job. My new job. Hallelujah. God can still keep you alive and still give you a successful and an accomplished destiny. Even without that job. Who are you living for? The woman abandoned her water and above. She went in and took up another assignment because she has a counter grace. He says salvation, genuine salvation, the scripture said, genuine salvation is like a man that sees a treasure in a field. He will go and sell everything he has to come and buy that field because of the treasure he has discovered. Hallelujah. You see, Christians get enrollment in school. They will so study, study uh, uh, your year one. You might study up to 18 different courses. Are you with me? And year two, it gets lower as you climb up. After four years, five years, depending on your course, you will come out first class. You will be praising. But that Christian have never read their Bible from cover to cover. But because of certificate and the chance and the place, the privilege, the certificate gives you in the society of men, they give it all attention. Hear me? Jesus is still coming back. You are not believing in it does not change anything. He's coming back. What is your account? What is your record? Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. What is your record? What is your account? What are you going to show? Are you telling him that day that I, I always come to church on Sunday? He demands of us to live for him every day. When was the last time somebody heard about salvation? Even when they are preaching in their buses, does he not look at you to sound to you like a strange thing now? Do you see yourself in the person that is preaching? Does it remind you of, oh, this is who I am? Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. You go to the market now, they flooded it with all kinds of designs. Waiting for Christians who don't know themselves. is close to you, look at her. Say, this one, this eyelash God gave you is good enough for the season. Say, I say it's good enough for the season. Say, glorify him with this one. Come on! For those of you watching us, you might not know the names I'm calling out. Have you ever seen an Ayelala man so pumped up, so carried away that he dressed and carried Bible? Have you ever seen them? They will never. They will never. Never. It's only believers who don't know much of who they are that easily go. Once you cross to that line of God sees their heart, you are backslidden. Don't no second thought about it. Are you with me here? Praise Master Jesus. Because it is a Jesus on the inside that clothes us on the outside. Praise God. Who are you living for? Look at 2 Corinthians, uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse fourteen. How was that? Why we just can't do anything that comes to our mind? Why we just can't allow the flesh to 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 determine what we do? How was that? Look at verse. 
verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us. I don't know if you know that rubber band with which they uh, do band money. You've seen it. When you draw it, what happens? It contrasts back. You see, that's what the love of Christ does to us. Which be something you might even have gone, but it will do what? It will drag you back again. The love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge. See our mentality, our mindset. That if one died for all, then we are all dead. Verse 15. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live what? Unto themselves. So you're not supposed to live unto yourself again, but unto him which died for them and rose again. What's his name? Christ Jesus. Verse 16. Wherefore, henceforth, from now, know we no man after the flesh. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? How many things should pass away? All things are what? And behold, all things are become 18 and the last verse I will read here. And all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and what? And has given us what? Which means now the life which we have is a life with an assignment of reconciliation. Every day we are reconciling sinners back to God. How many Christians, how many believers, how many people today are still mindful of this? How many of you yourself, how many of you reconciled to God this year? When you pay attention to the devil, fear his attack on your life, he will increase. He knows that you are disconnected. But when you ignore the devil and stay focused on God, listen, there are people that have had troubles more than you, but they refuse it to be a distraction. I've seen Pastor Moses, one of the men that mentored me at the time in my life. He came to service on Sunday, quite late, unusual. He's always the first to reach the church and comes from a very far distance. So he's a senior man, also a senior pastor. So we couldn't even ask, why did you come late? Because after the closing, I think some few minutes to the closing, we saw all the rest of his children because they didn't come. We were wondering. We were still muzzling up their strength after closing to ask him why he came late and why our other brothers and children did not come to service. That we saw neighbors all the way from Pokida and the church is around stadium area. They came to church with the last one, shouting and praising God. We were wondering. That was when he took his microphone because the, the wife of the pastor said it was, she was tired of poverty left like six months earlier. Are you getting it? And just to show up on Sunday morning with a child dead. And he was already getting ready for service. So he said to God, if you will raise my child, I will appreciate it. But if you know it is time to go, I still give you the glory. But I am going to praise you. I am going to church. I will keep him after closing. If I meet him alive, glory be to your name. If he doesn't wake up, I will bury the child. He left the rest at home and he took the Bible and he came to church. Throughout that service, you could not even notice on this pastor's face that his child was dead at home. But while he was doing the work of God, God raised the child. They said at about 10 o'clock in the morning, the child just cried out. That's how the child came alive. Do you understand? For some of you, that is a good excuse. That is, in fact, it will even be an offense that service still holds, even when you call in the morning. That they could still hold service before they even came to meet you. It will even be an offense. Hallelujah. See, what am I saying? That is to show you how much that man has sold himself to God, how much of Christ is in him. He no longer sees the devil as the one that should decide what will happen in his life. Who are you living for? Who are you living for? You will not be deceived for with the tithes you are paying and with the things
rich you are, you can build 10 churches for God. You can build 30 branches for God. And if you yourself is not a branch of God, you are going to hell fire. Do you hear what I said? Except you that is building the church, there is church in you. You are going to hell. You are going to hell. Who are you living for? The year is coming to an end. Take pen and paper. Begin to write how you serve God this year. How is your own prayer life? How is your own prayer life? Some of you have been so, you know, uh, uh, obsessed with the desire to see so-called enemy perish that even the devil is not afraid of you. Because he can imagine where you are having such mindset. That your prayers now, you just, as you pray, you want to see fire just consume them. They Nothing else in your life now you want to hear. Every day you want to see that come to pass. Come on, church. That is not who we are. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen. In as much as some persons gave themselves to witchcraft, it still pains God that they did that. Are you with me? And that you were not possessed, possessed with witchcraft, church. It's not right to. It's not by right. It's not by 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 being a, 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 a special. It was the coverage of God. That same biscuit you took when you were growing up, that was how they also took biscuit and they saw another thing was attached to it. Are you with me here? So it's only a privilege by God that it will not, you were not spoiled or contaminated. So God in his own plan, he knows that they don't damage to your life. God is seeing how to repay. And most times if we are honest, that which they damage, God has repaid us a hundredfold. We've collected the reward, the repayment, but we still want them to die. Hallelujah. God is still looking for how to win that so back. Are you getting what I'm telling you? He said, I have no pleasure for any man to die. God is still looking for how to bring that person to life and cast that witchcraft out and restore them back. Even though you want them dead. Let me tell you the truth. When you are not serving God well, when your, your heart is not in right standing with God, that's when you have time for enemy. I'm telling you the truth. Because fear rules your heart when Christ is not the one ruling it. When you know that your lifestyle, your Christianity is not genuine, you are a very fearful person. Fear, 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 fear. One of the ways you know you are not born again, fear and unforgiveness. When you have those two things, it's, it's, it's enough sign. Once you have all forgiveness and you have constant fear, child of God, check your side, your salvation very well. Because when you have genuine salvation, peace guides your heart. Peace rules your heart. Amen. You see everybody from the eyes of mercy. Because you being able to pray today is only because God covered some things from you in your life of others and gave you room to worship him. Praise Master Jesus. When they caught the woman in the act of adultery, Jesus only said, which of you here you know have no sin in your life? That's the first step. So everybody realized that there was something Christ covered for them. Are you with me here? Praise Master Jesus. Who are you living for? He said the love of Christ constrained us. Some Christians are in church today, but they belong to other different groups, some call it club, some call it whatever it is, which is not a Christian group. But because of monetary benefit that is attached to the group, influential benefit, so-called. Hallelujah. You will see some Christians that have never come to church to clean chair, sir. They will carry chair from house. Praise Master Jesus. Uh, so that when I lose my father, I will have uh, people that will help me. Let me tell you a secret. Your life is already a 
each time you put your life together and think of your soul. Huh? Peter said, I wish above all things that you prosper. There's nothing wrong in prosperity. Even the scripture says, through prosperity shall the gospel be spread abroad. Look at the church now, it's not completed. There is work to do. It's because the money is not available. I know God is providing it and he has started, he will complete it. It's good. If we have money, we would have done all of this in a week. It's good. He said, but I wish above all things that thou prosper and stay in divine health, even as thy soul. Which means your soul, your wealth, your health should cash up with your soul. Which means your soul should be the richest thing you have. But today, the soul of our belie of believers is the poorest thing in their life. Glory be to God. I saw a sister last to Thanksgiving. I saw her a week after Thanksgiving. I have to look into her eyes to know she was still the same person. Because then she was black. Now, can't place the color. Some are white, some are brown. Are you with me? Why? She has gone to apply cream to her body. Is it not? Amen. To get her skin to look the way she wants. Which means if we too can apply God's word to our soul, to our soul, to our soul, let not be deceived. Let you not be deceived. Let us not be deceived. You see that house? Listen to me. You know, when you say this, this is hard to believe except to trust God and his servant. For those of you that are tenants, when will I leave tenancy? God will do it for you. When you get your own house, it's just another chapter that is open. It's just another chapter. As the thought, as the, the trouble of tenancy, and the landlord will have an end, so you resume landlord responsibility. Is that so you know that tenancy has some advantage? Oh? When you give landlord 2000 you pay for a light bill, enter your house. Only you will pay 8000 Are you with me here? Praise God. So, as you flip over, it is that, yes, thank God now, when they, I have a house to myself, the responsibility continues. It opens another page. So let not the things of this world be what you want to live for. I don't know if you understand. Praise God. I think that should be seven years back. We launched our outreach. Few months into it, I got a call from Germany. And they offered me a proposition. They said they were going to send me 800 million. And I was going to take 250 million and give them uh, 550 million. Praise God. I said, I don't understand. He said, what they do is that they will appeal for funding to support the outreach. People will contribute to it. This is what I'm going to give them. Then I ask a question. If you are going to appeal, how are you very sure that it will be exact 800 million? I don't know if you understand. Huh? If you are going to ask people to support, how are you very sure that the amount that they are going to contribute will be exact 800 million? I said, okay. Before prayers, church, instantly, the 250 million has started working. Are you with me? I, I have seen, oh, this church, We've gone ahead with the upstairs plan. It's not this downstairs. We've got break everything, what the money can do. Everything. In less than 10 minutes, status changed. Everything. When my wife came back from her job, I told her, I said, ah, this is an opportunity. You said, but let's pray over it. I said, there's something that is wrong. When we prayed at night, God opened my eyes. I saw thousands of people crying, falling down with heart attack. And everything they were looking for was in my hand. And me and some group of people, we were sharing it and we were celebrating. And then when we were drinking, when I looked into it, it was blood. Ah! Around 3 or 2.33, then I called the person that called me. I said, come, this money has blood attached to it. What this person said is not the truth. What is really the truth? Is this a fraudster Said yes. He said, as a matter of fact, they've already collected the money, but they are looking for an account that is 
open. Like that they can drop the money that the government will not pay much. So they can donate it to orphanage, they can donate it to outpatient with an agreement with the person. And I said, no, I can't take that thing. Do you know, when I share this story with some persons, I will not tell you whether they are pastors or not. Someone told me to my eyes, said the line between foolishness and faith is tinier than an head. Praise God. They made me felt as if, and the people went ahead to want to convince me, mention some names. And some names they mentioned stands on the altar. That this person has been helping us, but they suddenly became too greedy. The last one we gave. So when you even see your mate, sir, man, people of God, when you see somebody you are better than, educated than, eloquent than, are you with me? Achieving some things, don't even bother. That thing you are seeing now is the last days of their peace. Hell is waiting for them. Have we not ruled the church now? Hallelujah. I would have been inside air conditioner now, but I would be hot. Because I know that the money I use to build this mighty edifice, are you with me? It's not of God. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Amen. See, marriage will come. Children will come. Do you understand? Don't make it your reason for living. Don't make it your reason for living. Just go and write it down. Those cars you are seeing, just relax. Few time from now, they will sell it auction price to you. Yes. Are you with me here? I was at the well on, uh, is it not on Friday? And they came to sell a Jeep, a brand new Jeep that is sold for 38 million. Somebody bought it for 5 million. Why? The person that owns the Jeep went for ritual and the thing backfired after a while. The person is running man. So nobody wants to drive the car. So they were even looking for who we buy. It's only this man that agreed to, to buy. And after he paid them, it, as well, he was breaking egg. And even you know, that was settling with the devils and the demons. Condition for driving this car. I know where it came from. Praise God. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. I just told them, they are lucky they have sold it. We will buy. We don't break egg. Hallelujah. What am I saying, sir? Man. If that person lives for those things, where is he today? Who are you living for? We are going to die one day. Oh. Are you with me? We are going to die one day. We are going to, if we will see 70, it's in the hands of God. So desire 120 is our own. But only God knows who will reach there. But while you are alive today, prepare yourself. Clean your heart. Clean your spirit. Obey God's word. Let's not forget the commission that we are sent out to win souls. Let's not forget that. And you'll be amazed. When you turn to God, he takes over your battles. When he takes over your battles, rest will come. Rest will come. Many are facing different challenges today because they don't want to serve God. They want to use God. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Lastly for today, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. I pray that the Holy Spirit will communicate this message to us better in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 10. Don't turn the prostitute sisters because of Christmas. No. No. It will pass. It will pass. It will pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't turn a drunk these days, brother, because of Christmas. Glory be to God. This word is actually coming to an end. Hallelujah. I remembered one year we bought jeans at Forestry. We were at the wood. By vehicle. Then road we are still good. 30 minutes you are doing road. By trekking, one hour, 30 minutes, if you are a very fast trekker. But because we have no money, but thank God we had bicycles then. So one hour we have, or we used to compete with buses on the way while we were riding bicycles. Praise God. Why did we return the jeep? Because we saw a mark where it's like a scissors cut. We 
return it because as we start to wash it, that little hole is going to expand. We trek and we return it. When I passed through New Benin Church and saw what they were calling jeans that they were selling, tongue. I have to go. I said, Madam, do you actually sell these things? He said, One is seven thousand. Hey, you will wear a trouser. Your lap will be showing your. Are you saying Satan is wicked? Satan has not even been bold to show himself to anybody. Have you, I don't know if you understand. What I'm saying. He has not been bold. Have you seen the devil yet? He has not been bold enough to show himself to anybody. But you, he is even shocked. The dimension you are functioning in. May that not be your portion. Let me just catch you this year. Try it. Psychiatry straight. Come on now. May we not turn the opportunity to glorify God into shame. Huh? So how will you feel this morning? I am here wearing short jeans and I'm preaching. And you know, I know what many people are going to say, even those that are watching us online now. What about this one? Because there are many people so so singing gospel songs on television that are wearing these things. Anybody can sing a gospel song. Are you with me? No. Anybody can sing it. But it takes those that are born again to dress decent. Are you with me here? Because you cannot tell me that if you taste this food, it's very sweet, and you serve it to dirty plates and say it doesn't matter. Will you buy? So which means you are both selling their food and their container. Is it not? So you first of all make their container very fine so that somebody can trust that their food can be this sweet. So you can't tell me you will dress half naked and you are singing the gospel song that you are born again. It's not correct. It's not correct. There are some songs I hear in audio. I look for the video. I delete the video. I stay with the audio. Are you with me? Because the song that was sung is glorifying God. But who sang it is not glorifying God. So I stay with the song. Don't make those people your standard. Your Bible is your standard. When you start to say that person, you have gone out of the scripture. Who are you living for? Matthew 10, verse 39. Are you there? And he that findeth his life shall do what? And he that loseth his life for my sake shall what? Praise God. Where we read in verse Corinthians chapter 5, 14 to 18 say, we have lost our life in Christ. Is it not? That's what baptism teaches us. Now, the life which we have is in Christ. He said, but if you still go back to find your old life, he said, then you will lose it. Are you getting it now? Is it not my life? Is it not my body? It's my life. Oh, when you find your life back, he said, you will lose it. For you that have lost your own and now carry the life of Christ, said you will find it in him. Glory be to God. Let me be frank with you, church. There are some of their clothes that are very beautiful. But the message is carried. It's not the message of our kingdom. Are you with me here? Praise God. So we don't wear it because of the message it carries. Are you with me now? Praise God. Amen. I pray that as you go home today, you will sit down. Listen. If, even though you are still lying, you owe yourself the right to tell yourself the truth. Are, we, are you with me? Sit down and ask yourself, where did I actually fail this year? You have not been brave. You have not been you have not been studying God's word, begin to talk to God and ask for his grace now. Hallelujah. What has work and somebody is outside. I don't know where he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you, you hear what I'm saying? Make 
sure. Write them down. See, you see why lives don't always change the way we make those 31st if wishes? They don't change a thing. That when you come to church, cross overnight, you now look for Bible and be writing, I will not do this again. I will not do that again. I will not do that again. It doesn't change anything. Are you with me? Now, it's done Thanksgiving. The rest days that are left in this year, start to check where you feel and begin now to make those adjustments. Do you understand? Praise Master Jesus. And when you cross into the new year, why you are asking God for the grace to accomplish all those your goals, then you will know how many people enter the year with that plan. Because in the first hour of the year, they are shooting, shooting knockouts. Praise God. That's the first thing they are saying. Go. And when their lives start to make noise, they wonder why there is trouble. That was the first thing they saw. Are you with me? May your first hour be spent in the presence of God, converting that grace for the year over your declaration and your request. Pray that God will give us the grace to live for Him henceforth in the name of Jesus. Stand up on your feet. I want to pray with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Gracious King of glory, we exalt your name. Father, we know you said you know we have need of these whole good things. But we are here to say, Lord, today, forgive us. Your word has convicted us. There are areas we fail. Lord, grant us life again to see another year. Lord, we are saying today that we will live for you. You are our God. You are our Savior. Lord Jesus, we accept you again and again as our Lord and personal Savior. Holy Spirit of God, we ask you of your mercy. For we have quitted you, called you back, quitted you. We say, Lord, come and stay now. I sanctify us all with the blood of Jesus. Those that are here and watching with us and will ever watch this message, I sanctify us with the blood of Jesus. The work of God in our hands receive fresh life. Receive fresh salvation fire in the name of Jesus. Father, I release your children to you, Holy Ghost. As they go home today, encounter them. Talk with them. Show them the areas you want them to change and grant them the grace to succeed. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord.